Hello you plonkers and welcome back today to another video on the Druzy channel. A different sort of video today, ladies and gentlemen. I've just graduated my university degree, a bachelor's in exercise, sports and rehabilitation science. Andrew Thomas Cox. And I have people ask me all the time, what do you study? How did you get to where you studied? How do you work with footballers? I'm in high school. What subject should I do to do what you do? I get this question so many times. I'm just going to make a video on it and cover all bases from high school to where I am now to where I'm trying to get to to have a career in elite sport because that's what I want to do. So I'll be talking about what education I've had, uh, the experience that I've had to do, the qualifications, the accreditations, all that fun stuff in this video. So whatever age you are, you can sort of relate to it, whether you're in high school uni or you've graduated you should be able to, to get something out of this so if you don't know what I do or, or where I am I'm an exercise scientist now that I've graduated and I'm a strength and conditioning coach so if you want to work in football or just any sport really as a sports scientist this is the path for you I'm going to preface this by saying that I do not represent the views or anything of the clubs that I, I've worked for or represented in the past. My opinion is not theirs. What I say does not apply to them. If you like the video or if you're new to the channel, drop a sub, drop a like. Let's get into the video. Rightio, let's throw it back to 2017. Young Drews is in year 11 in high school and he's picking his subjects. I've always said since I was a child that I will only ever work in a job that I'm passionate about. I don't, I don't wanna be doing something day to day that I don't wanna do. And the only thing that ever really interested me so much is sport. I've always loved sport ever since I was a kid. So for my ATAR subjects, I chose Phys Ed Studies. Obviously that's just sport epitomized. And also Human Biology, because I was like, okay, if I wanna be a physio or something like that, work in the sports health sector, you know, I need to know how the human body works. So those were the two main ones that I did. I also did uh, business management, maths applications, and English. I'm not saying that you have to do ATAR. I got a 79 ATAR score. I only needed a 70. You can obviously do bridging courses and stuff like that. So the two main ones that I highlighted there, human bio and phys ed. Now, human bio, I didn't find it too tricky. I had a really good teacher, which was sick. And basically, you just learn real basic sort of surface level physiology and functions of your systems. You learn about the structure of the heart, what each part of the heart does. You learn about your lungs, how air goes into your lungs and how that is created into energy and stuff like that. You learn about energy production, which is really important as you go along. And you learn about like the neural system as well. So your brain, your spinal cord and how that makes your body move. Interesting stuff. I uh, also learned about human evolution in human bio, which I actually really enjoyed. Human bio was my favorite high school subject. And it gave me a great foundational knowledge for going into uni as well. So I can't recommend human bio enough. And then phys ed, uh, obviously good fun. You get to do sport a couple times a week while you're at school. But the theory side mainly was based around sports psychology, which is like your mental skills, coaching style, basic anatomy so just bones and muscles pretty much motor control so like motor neurons how they work which is yeah the, the combination of your muscular system and your neural system and then a little bit of biomechanics as well so leaving high school 79 ATAR basic understanding of sort of how the body works just a real basic understanding but I knew that I was interested in it and I knew I had a passion in sport so I applied at Curtin University to do exercise, sports and rehabilitation science. I needed a 70 ATAR to get into the course that I applied for and I got 79 happy days. And leaving school was pretty, it was a, a shitty time for me, for me personally. I left school and I just left that part of my life behind me, completely moved on. Didn't have any friends that I went to school with after, like bin them all off, all skinny as, had no confidence. The only thing I had going for me was that I knew one day I'd be doing something I enjoyed and the next year would be the start of that when I started at uni. So you could do exercise and sports science like I did if you want to work in sport or physiotherapy. Physio required a 98 R and I did not have that. Plus exercise science is a ju it's just a bit more, more fun. Physio, it's like you're, you're fixing broken people. Sports science is like you're making not broken people elite. You're making good people better. So that appealed to me more. Although jobs in physiotherapy are probably easier to come by early on 
and better paying early on as well. So in my first year of uni, the units that I did were human structure and function, uh, functional anatomy, which was sick, going into wet labs, looking at cadavers, which are dead bodies and stuff like that, looking at muscles, finding out the attachments and whatnot, intro to psychology, which is pretty cool, just learning how your brain works and different theories. And then you sort of learn to read scientific journals and papers and whatnot in your first year. The human structure and function and the human physiology that I did, in first year was pretty much human bio all over again it was just solidifying what i'd already known so it was pretty easy for me in the first year but the good thing about uni is it's not all theory based so whilst you're learning all this stuff you're doing practical stuff as well so first year very basic taking heart rate taking heart rate during exercise uh, taking blood pressure taking blood pressure during exercise and then just conducting basic fitness assessments like vertical jump broad jump so pretty much after doing human bio in high school and going to uni for a year at this point, like my understanding of the human body was pretty solid at this point. And I, I love that that's my career as well, like understanding how all of this bloody stuff works. I can't see myself studying anything else because my career and my knowledge applies directly to me, which is very handy. But I started to think about it more from a, a scientific uh, perspective, a sort of why perspective why does this happen instead of just remembering everything for the test and then it all leaving thinking about why does your cardiac output increase during exercise why does the respiratory rate start to go up what happens to the body when you're exercising stuff like that and just getting a better understanding of it back to the personal anecdotes um i was pretty insecure in my first year of of uni as well so i was still very skinny still wasn't going to the gym at the time but you know, I started to, to redesign myself. I started to find myself a little bit. Started meeting different people from all different walks of life. That's the good thing about uni. You're not just seeing your mates from your same suburb. You're meeting people from all around. So you're meeting lots of different people from different cultures and getting different perspectives and whatnot. Going to uni after leaving high school was a clean slate. So I just started to, to find myself, be authentic and genuine and just, yeah, make a new sort of identity for myself that wasn't trying to be someone else to be cool in high school or whatever. Like, I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna be me. Let's have a good time. There's a lot less egos at uni, I've found. There's no popularity contests or trying to impress someone or trying to put other people down to big yourself up. Doesn't really happen as much. One piece of advice I would give to you if you're doing sports science, if you're looking down this path, is in your first year, if you're not already, go to the gym. I started going to the gym at the end of first year and it, it changed my life forever. I'll never not go to the gym again. And you can apply what you're learning at uni to the gym as well. They pretty much give you the cheat code for what to do. I applied that directly to myself and it worked out marvelous. But Druzy, you still haven't worked in the sports industry. You're just going to uni and being a little lap dog. All right, fair enough. Between first year and second year, I saw an ad on Facebook. I don't know if I had have seen this ad, if I would have gone down this pathway, but thank God I did. I saw an ad for Peel Thunder on Facebook to become a sports trainer. They're looking for sports trainers. If you don't know what a sports trainer is, it's massage, running water, first aid, and strapping, basically. If you do a level one sports trainer course, pretty much most semi-pro clubs will take you on because they're always, always, always looking for people to come and strap ankles, strap fingers, give massages before games, do first aid if anything goes wrong. So get your level one sports trainer. That'll get you into whatever bloody sport you're into. It'll get you in through the door. So I started at Peel Thunder at the end of my first year of uni, between first and second year. And you always hear people say, networking, networking. Like it's a bit of a gross word. It feels like you're trying to, to groom someone for benefit. Oh, give me a job in the future. Oh, let me be nice now so you, I can get benefit from you in the future. I met two great professionals in my time at Peel Thunder. Uh, the physiotherapist is now the Frio Women's Head Physio. Great person, I learned so much from her. And the strength and conditioning coach is now a strength and conditioning coach or a high performance manager at the Tasmania Jack Jumpers in the NBL. You need to know these people because one day, possibly, if you get along with them nice enough and you have a genuine relationship with them, they could have a say in you getting a job or not. So networking, very important. My advice in this stage, because obviously you've, you've sort of learned about the body, but you don't actually know how to apply that to a population of clients you're working with. So as a sports trainer, you don't have much responsibility. You're just there to do the work that the physios don't really want to do all the time. 
but you work alongside the physios, you work alongside the strength and conditioning coaches. Just be a sponge. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's another massive thing that I've learned. Just ask as many questions as you want. If you think they're stupid, people that think that you're stupid by saying that are stupid because you need to ask as many questions as you can from these professionals to gain as much knowledge as you can. The advice that these people give you is priceless. Like it will shape the way that you think and obviously they're heading in the right direction. So why not gain an understanding of how they think to move in that direction with them? Ask lots of questions, be a sponge, have the mindset of an idiot. Like think I don't know anything and I need to be gaining more knowledge all the time so that you're constantly learning. Again, once I reached Peel, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but it was the first time I'd seen a strength and conditioning coach. I never really had an appreciation or an understanding of what strength and conditioning coaches did. So I was always alongside the physio and then I'd go out onto the track outside of the change rooms and I'd see the strength and conditioning coach doing cool stuff, doing rehab for players that are coming back from injury, doing pre-season fitness, running gym sessions. And I was like, that's more me than the physio is. And that's when it started to sort of click in my head, right, that may be what I wanted to do. And by the time I left Peel Thunder, I realized strength and conditioning, that's what I want to do. Not only do you gain all this knowledge and advice and whatnot from people in this field, you also understand how to communicate with coaches physios strength and conditioning coaches and players which is really important you can have all the knowledge in the world that you want but if you can't communicate that clearly and have a connection with the players and the coaches or whoever you're trying to communicate that to you might as well chuck it in the bin mate you need to know how to communicate with players very important and at this point it was sick for me i was working at a waffle club being in the change rooms before games, seeing the players get pumped up before games, running water on game day, getting to be on the ground, just getting to be in that environment. It was right up my alley and I was like, all right, this is what I want to do. I want to work in sports because this environment is so sick. If you watch like To Hell and Back, which the Melbourne Demons did or Making Their Mark, that AFL documentary on Amazon Prime, being in that environment, being in that sports environment and seeing how the story of the season unfolds, I love it. That is just me to a T. So for my whole second year at uni, I was at Peel Thunder, but I was also studying at the same time, obviously. So motor control, which is yeah, how your neural system relates to your muscular system, biomechanics, which is sort of just applying maths to, to sports, I suppose, sort of thing like lever systems and just different theories of muscle contraction and how it relates to force production and all that sort of stuff an area that i definitely need to improve on also did a bit of exercise physiology just a bit more that you can never learn too much about the human body because you need to know it down to the molecular level so i learned a bit more exercise physiology and then also a professional communication unit to learn how to communicate effectively. That was the first semester. And then in the second semester, I actually got to do a unit called strength and conditioning across a lifespan, which was gym stuff, sprint training, uh, different training types, so circuit training, interval training, all different types of stuff, plyometrics, anything you can think of going to the gym and doing, there was a whole unit on that. And it was one of my favorite units that I did. So it just solidified the fact that I wanted to do strength and conditioning. Very good unit. Also did pathophysiology. So uh, disease, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, autoimmune disease like diabetes and stuff like that. And just like the immune response and vaccines. Also had a unit on sports psychology as well, but it was taught pretty poorly, unfortunately, which sucks because I love psychology. Obviously a really interesting area. And that's another massive area in sport that you can work in as well. If you think you're interested in wellness or anything like that, sports psychology is a massive area that you can definitely go down. So that was second year, working in the waffle system and going to uni, going to the gym as well, applying what I've learned at uni and at Peel to myself. Personal anecdote time, where was I at? At the end of second year, I'd found a good group of friends, like a proper good group of friends to socialize with. They were funny, intelligent, genuine, outgoing people, and they always wanted to do stuff. So every time there was a social opportunity to hang out with them, I'd just say, yes, 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 yes. And then before you know it, you have a great group of friends, like a big group of friends, all studying the same stuff as you, all like-minded. That's the uni life what you want right there. Just say yes to any time anyone asks you to hang out. Say yes to every time that people ask you to hang out and say yes to every professional opportunity. Anything that comes up, if you're working in a sports environment, like if there's a training session on a day that you wouldn't usually go or anything like that, if you see something pop up and you're sort of interested in it, just commit. Networking, opportunities and experience. That's 100% 
do it. It'll, it'll benefit you, trust me. And this was the year I started to go to the gym as well. So I chucked on 16 kilos, I was feeling fit and healthy, and I was with a group of friends that like will be friends for life now. So it was the first time in my life I reckon I could say, yep, I am happy most of the time. It was good, very good. And having done a year at Peel and doing that strength and conditioning unit, I was like, all right, strength and conditioning is the career path for me. In my third year of uni, Prac begun, so getting experience, you needed 140 hours of exercise prescription, assessment and delivery experience and they interview you, they ask you, what do you want to do for a career? Me, I said I want to work with elite athletes, I want to work in sport, strength and conditioning, something like that, I just want to work in sport, be training elite athletes can you sort something out for me? They pretty much said it's a highly competitive field so we can't just chuck you in somewhere. You're gonna to have to apply and get interviewed. Whereas other people that did, I don't know, exercise with kids or something like that, strength and conditioning, gym stuff, personal training, it's like a less competitive field so they can get into that and there's lots of jobs in those sort of areas as well. So that's another direction that people can go down. But the elite sports sector, obviously lots of people wanna get into there. So you have to build up a CV and apply for different places. Luckily, I'd been at Peel. So in that previous year, getting that experience gave me a, a slight edge to some people that were applying for the same stuff that I was. I applied at Claremont Football Club and I didn't get it, but that was all right. I applied at the Fremantle Dockers because they were affiliated with my uni and I got an interview accepted, but the week before I had an interview at the WA State Academy and I think just my experience in the waffle and my love for football got me the gig, so I started out with the under 19s girls stateside. So now we're in 2021, so this is the start of last year. I started at the under 19s girls in the State Academy. I was there from January until April, and this is where I was working along two strength and conditioning coaches, and they were just feeding me so much information. Couldn't have had two better mentors to just let me absorb everything that they gave me. Gave me so much experience, had so much trust in me. That's a, another thing. Some places may not give you the experience. They might talk to you about the theory of what they're doing and whatnot, but you need to get chucked in the deep end. So a couple weeks in, I had to do a warm up. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but when they give you like a few boxes to tick, this is what a warm up does. These are the boxes we're trying to tick before they go into training. You need to execute that in front of about 30 girls that at my age, it was quite intimidating, all right? Trust me. Doing warm-ups, running the GPS software to track and manage load, cool-downs, and just like team gym sessions as well. That that was the main stuff I was doing in my time at the State Academy. Got to work with people like Dana East, Amy Franklin from Frio, Charlie Thomas, a few girls that got drafted last year. And yeah, it was a great experience. Once the under-19s girls program had finished and I was done with them, when the under-17s boys were about to start, up I made sure and I persisted with the SNC coach that I was going to be there I was loving it so why wouldn't I I just kept showing up keep turning up keep asking questions keep being curious another opportunity popped up through school sport WA I got a text message from Gabby O'Sullivan who plays for the Dockers and actually used to teach at my school funnily enough she is the head coach of the under 15s girls in school sport WA and she said we need a strength and conditioning coach and I was like all right, I'll do it. I've never had that role before. The head s &T, the, the head honcho, the only honcho, but the head one nonetheless. Running my own program. I got to work with, yeah, Gabby O'Sullivan, Ash Sharp, who both play for the, the Frio Dockers girls. We got to go up to Dampier for a trip, play a state carnival. We won it, of course, because we're good. Just these opportunities, the people you get to meet. Gabby O'Sullivan is an absolute star of a person. Very interesting. Ash Sharp as well, gun athlete, really good experience. Got to travel and apply my trade, and that's just the best thing that you can do, hands down. Travel, work in football, just have a good time. It was great. So my role in the under 15s girls was on game day to like do the rotations. It's just like playing FIFA pretty much. You just shuffling the magnets about. You don't get to watch much of the game, unfortunately, because your head's down the whole time, but you're really immersed in the game. You're managing the players loads and whatnot. You're talking to the coaches, shuffling around at quarter time, half time, 
making changes, you're really involved in the game. So as I was saying, I got to work with the under 17s boys as well. So doing similar stuff to what I was doing with the under 19s girls. So warm ups, GPS software tracking. The under 17s played the under 19s boys in a scratch match. So I got to run the under 17s boys, warm them up and then do their bench rotations. I had someone there with me just looking over my shoulder, making sure that I didn't mess anything up. That was sick because that was some, some high level stuff and I'm there bloody not really having much experience at all getting chucked in the deep end again but it's those experiences where you get chucked in the deep end that you get confidence in your own abilities that was sick once the under 17s boys program fizzled out they were meant to have games earlier in the year but they didn't get to until later in the year because of covid anyway the under 19s program started and i did two sessions and then got shipped off to a gym for uni this gym is affiliated with Curtin Uni and you have to go there for two months and do lots of theory stuff, um, exercise prescription, assessment and delivery, pretty much PT stuff, but with a bit more professionalism. So you're doing like fitness consults, fitness based testing and stuff like that. So I did that for two months. I got a 60, like late 60s year old lady, late 30s year old bloke and the late 20s female who was pregnant. So I got a real wide range and a greater appreciation of considerations for different people. For example, pregnant lady, you don't want to be doing planks and push-ups and stuff like that in case they're full on their belly. Obviously, with the older lady, I didn't want to be doing stuff that caused much impact or twisting of the spine or flexion of the spine, anything like that. The 37-year-old bloke had never been to the gym before. I just taught him the ropes, pushed him hard, and then he ended up signing up at a different gym and has probably continued his fitness journey since. So it gave me an appreciation of personal training. It's definitely something I will do in the future. It promotes positive change in people and you get to see that firsthand and you sort of design it. So I was there for two months between working with the under 17s boys and the under 19s boys. So once I was done at that gym, I got to go back to the State Academy again, pestering the strength and conditioning coach who I was working under. Can I come back? Please, I want more experience. I was just loving the State Academy process and I went back and the week that I went back was the week of their first game against South Australia. So it was the first game against South Australia and all I did for that was like urine testing, piss testing to see how hydrated the players are before a game. It helped just set up and run the warm up. And then I was just on the siren for that game because they didn't need me on the bench. Probably the peak of my experience this year was getting to work at the Curtain Razor for the grand final, WA versus South Australia. Played on Optus before uh, the grand final between Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs. So got to warm up the players, do a bit of urine testing, set up the GPS stuff, got to run water as well across Optus. I'll never forget seeing Jacob Van Royen kick the winning goal with like a minute or something left to put WA ahead. And I was on the bench and it was just bloody euphoria, mate. It was great. Then walking out of the stadium, I look to my left, I see Mark McGowan. I look to my right, I see Nat Fife. I look to my left, I see Christian Petrarca. I look to my right, I see Nick Nat Nui. I was just like, I am way out of my depth here. <laughs> and then to finish off my State Academy experience, we did some draft combine preparation. So 2K time trial, uh, vertical jump, agility test, and the 20 meter sprint. Did a bit of prep for that. And then I got to go to the draft combine, help out running the 2K time trial and the agility test as well. I did a whole video on the, the combine as well. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. The main advice I could give about that experience is just keep saying yes to every opportunity. Every time that someone in a position higher than you, if you have a good relationship with them, obviously, asks you to do something to help out, say yes, do it. It'll benefit you. Trust me, we'll get on to how it benefited me. So I did experience for my whole third year, but I still had to do course content. And then I finished uni, which was, which was great. Great fun to get to graduate and whatnot. Graduated the other night. Actually, I'll go grab my hat that I got. Yes. Yes. So now that I've finished my degree, anecdotally, where would I say I'm at? I can pretty safely say that I have the knowledge and confidence to run a strength and conditioning program for a sports team, which is massive. I've gained lifelong friends along the way, which is great. And most importantly, the thing that I wanted to get out of uni was having a clear image of what I want my future to look like. Along the way as well, there's accreditations that pop up. So once I finished uni, I did an ASCA accreditation level one. So Australian Strength and Conditioning Association, level one so that basically says yes you are a strength and conditioning coach next week i have a skinfold uh, course as well isaac level one anthropometry 
So yeah, calculating skin folds and stuff like that, which is another very handy skill to have. Obviously graduating, I got my degree, so a Bachelor of Exercise Sports and Rehabilitation Science. The degree also made me eligible to be ESSA accredited, so an exercise scientist accreditation, and also got my level one sports trainer in my time at Peel. So I'm walking out with ASCA level one, Isaac level one, a bachelor degree, ESSA accreditation, and level one sports trainer. So five different qualifications slash accreditations. You may have the knowledge of these accreditations, but without the accreditation, lots of employers sort of need that. They need to tick the box that this employer is accredited, yes. Get as many accreditations as you can. Within three years of leaving high school, I have five qualifications and accreditations, so it's pretty good. So where to now that I've finished uni? Well, I wanted to work in football still, and having worked at the State Academy, that networking link, always saying yes opportunities, being curious, being genuine to the people that you work with. I had pestered the strength and conditioning coach again and said, hello mate, do you know any jobs going? Just asked him. And he said, yes, I do actually. Never hurts to ask questions. What did I say? Ask questions. He said, yes, there are three opportunities available and one of them just rung me up. And he said, hello, Andrew, this is the Perth talent manager. Would you like an SNC gig? with our futures program and I said yes so that's where I'm at now I'm running the strength and conditioning program for the Perth futures the boys I was thinking initially of doing an assistant SNC role at the league or Colts waffle level but when the head SNC role popped up I was like I'm gonna have a lot more pressure on me I'm gonna get thrown into that deep end again so I'm gonna learn a lot more and it's probably like a, a good in between like I I feel like I have enough knowledge and experience to be able to run my own program at this point. But at the same time, you can get thrown too far in the deep end and the Colts and league level, like there's a lot of pressure and eyes on that. Coming out of uni pretty raw, I think the futures was a good level for me, which is where I'm at now. And my role just entails pre-season fitness, so getting them match fit pretty much, getting them strong, game day rotations, warm-ups, cool downs, delivery of rehab programs and stuff like that. Good fun stuff. But the coaches I worked with at the State Academy told me an undergrad or bachelor's degree, that the same thing, that won't get you to where you want to be. You need the, the post-grad, which is after your grad. I've graduated now, so post-grad. You need to do that study to sort of legitimize you. Just about anyone can do an undergrad degree. Like if you have a high enough ATAR score, you go to the classes, you tick the boxes, you can fool your way through a degree. But it takes people that are properly dedicated to do a postgraduate degree, get more experience, level up, upskill themselves, and then that's when you start getting paid to work in the sports industry. So this year I'm doing an honors degree. An honors degree is like a research degree. So I've got one question that I have to answer all year and you have to do like literature reviews, the methods of how you're going to collect the data, the results that you drew from the data, and then how it applies uh, to whatever population that you're working with. So luckily enough, I applied for one at the Fremantle Dockers, and I will be doing that project. I won't be at the club though, unfortunately for me due to COVID. And once I've finished that, I'll be much more strongly considered by employers than someone with just a bachelor's degree. So it just gives you that competitive edge over anyone that's done an undergrad, you've done an extra year, you understand how to conduct a research project, which is a big tick. So that'll get you to just about where you need to be. But if you wanna be a proper top dog, and this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a PhD. So it's pretty much three more years of research. I'm gonna have a break after this year and go traveling through Europe, but well, that's, that's where I'm at. And then once I come back, I'll do a PhD and you'll start to call me Dr. Cock. But yeah, that's about it. That's how I got to where I wanna be from high school to where I am now. I hope that helped. I hope started getting the cogs ticking in some people's mind. Hopefully I answered all of your questions and whatnot. Exercise and sports science, if you're interested in football and you've got a bit of brainage, give it a crack. Highly recommend. You won't regret it. Do what you're passionate about and you won't work a day in your life. But I'll wrap up this video because it's gone for far too long. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, drop a like, drop a sub. Make sure you keep your eyes locked on the channel. There should be some content coming soon. The Drew's yarns out every week, obviously. But yeah, just keep your eyes locked. Drop a comment. Get down there. I'll respond to the ones where needed. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, you plonkers. Goodbye.